in trying to recover from musician focal dystonia, an easy trap to get into is to overfocus on the problem area. Being a finger, a hand, a shoulder, an arm, and so on, it's to really put all the focus while we are playing on that area. Let's say we have a bad ring finger on the right hand. As we move up or down the scale, we start to always almost look, visualize that finger trying to go up and down on the key. One interesting experiment to do while playing is to look at the window. I realized that early in my recovery, let's say I was playing a scale from the bottom of the horn to the top, I would always hang toward my D finger and the right hand. Or if I was playing some exercise or some music that had some Ds in it, it would always hang on that. But if I was looking out of the window at the scenery and not thinking about what I was playing, I would surprise myself and go, wow, I just played it and I didn't even notice it and it didn't hang. The more we focus on that area, the more it's like inflaming the brain map. So one way that you can see the state of your brain map is to lay on the bed or lay on the carpeted floor on your back, slightly spread your legs and put your arms to your side, close your eyes and completely relax. The next thing to do is to start exploring from your body the inside. So go inside your toes, see if you can feel your toes in your left foot, your right foot. Start to feel the inside of your feet, then start to move up your legs, up to your hip, then inside your stomach, your chest. Then you go from your fingertips into your hands, into your arms, shoulder, and then you go into your neck, go into your face toward the top of your head. Also doing that exercise, trying to completely relax those limbs as you feel the inside of them can enable you to go to sleep. That's a way to go into deep relaxation. And then as you get into the head, basically you turn the light out. What you're going to sense is an area of your body, the area where you have the focal dystonia, seem much larger than the opposite area. So my right hand at the worst of my dystonia felt that it was about as big as my chest and my right arm from my shoulder to my finger felt that it was about as long as my body. So trying to put a hand that big on a small instrument is kind of a difficult task. For that hand to reduce size, it does take time. It's not something that happened overnight. It's as we become more and more aware of the problem, the more we let it come down, the more the map starts to resize itself and doing it by doing exercise, by matching both sides. So how can we play not focusing on it? So one way that I found that worked for me was focusing on the feet. So if I'm playing my instrument, I try to I close my eyes and then I try to stay with my thoughts inside my feet, feeling the pressure of my soul on the floor. And then what you're going to realize is that suddenly when you get to the bad finger or the problem area in an arm and so on, is your mind, your focus going to quickly shift to there and then go back to your feet. It's very difficult to not have the mind shifting. It can be with an area of playing. It can be with a movement. It can be with a note. There is a trigger that makes you trigger your attention back to the problem area. So one way I do it too is I look across the street at a house that has a little black light on the side of a wall. I look straight ahead with my eyes on that spot, feel the inside of my feet, 
and then slowly go up and down the scales or do exercise or play pieces or do arpeggios and so on. And then you realize the eyes wanting to shift quickly to the area of the thoughts and is to try to go slower and slower, becoming like a deep state meditation where you get everything to come down. You look straight ahead at the spot and you play extremely slow, as slow as you have to move. And then you just go one finger after the next in a deeply relaxed state, always focusing on that spot without any thoughts to that hand or arm or problem area. The less you focus on that area, the less you activate it, the smaller the map becomes. Once you can stop to focus on that spot ahead, you can try to close your eyes and visualize the axis of symmetry. So on my saxophone or on a clarinet or on a woodwind that you play straight ahead, you can visualize right between your hands. And you can see your hands like from almost an out of body experience. You see yourself play from the outside and you see the hands matching on each side. One way to also readjust the map is to feel the left hand. So now you feel the left hand on your instrument and you feel then the right hand and you see how they don't match. Or you move the same finger on the left hand, you move it on the right hand and feel how different it feels. The left hand feels so effortless if that's your good hand and the right hand feels heavier, bigger, stiffer. So by visualizing and focusing on the other side, you can start to have an idea what the map should be like. But you don't want to think too much about the opposite limbs because then you're going to overactivate that limb. So the idea is just to do once in a while, focus what it feels like, see if you can match it on the other side and then do the body exploration, feel your shoulders, feel your hips, feel your legs and then feel the weight on the sole of your feet. Another way that I worked on it, that I found to work with also other individuals, is I started practicing in a very large room or playing outside. I would march to a beat and then I would slowly play my scale like da, da, as I walk or da, 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 or then eight notes da, 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 and so on. The act of walking, I was focusing on my walk, made my mind not focus on my hands. Also, by concentrating on the lower part of the body by walking, it was really relaxing my upper body. So that's another exercise that you can try. Then I started to do it standing still. And even to this day, if I start to feel my focus becoming to my hands, I may start to walk to the beat that I'm playing to and then playing in time to my feet and feeling my feet in relation to the beat and taking all the stress out of trying to move that finger in time. Because once you try to really push a finger in time, you think ahead of it to that finger and you try to do a conscious movement to make that finger close on the key, which already stiffen and just mess up the movement because you try to do a normal movement with a conscious thought. So you engage the wrong muscles. So stop thinking about the problem area. Look straight ahead outside at a view or a point across the street. Look at the tree, look at the scenery and then play that passage, play that little exercise, play that scale extremely slow, looking at that point, focusing on the inside of your feet, the pressure on the floor, your connection to the earth, your connection to everything below, and then being anchored down 
and then slowly moving your fingers and not letting your mind and your thought drift to that problem area. You're going to see as your mind cannot jump to the problem area, the muscle is not going to contract as much or may not even contract and you may surprise yourself that you be able to play that uh, notes, that little sequence or that phrase. What can happen is as you become able to play those lines, you become worried that it's going to be taken away from you because it's so exciting when you can finally play those phrases with no problem. Oh, it's going to come back. It's going to do this and that. And then you start focusing on it in a different way, saying, I'm going to do this funny thing to try to make it relax. So you're almost doing an internal enclosure to that little note sequence where you put yourself in a different frame to play that spot. By then, you're just doing the same thing. You're in a different way concentrating on it. The idea is to play the whole instrument without focusing on any things specific to your movements, becoming completely relaxed. And the only focus is very small, very light, very effortless, focusing outside, feeling the inside of your feet. Later on, you can do it with your eyes closed, but it's much more difficult with your eyes closed to not jump to the area. What you're going to see if you focus outside at a point, you're going to see your eyes wanting to jump and it's going to be a feedback. As a last little parenthesis, there is a whole array of research into brain spotting with where the eyes look. There is people way more uh, in the uh, attuned and in, uh, that can teach in depth that type of area. What you can see is just as you look in different places, you're going to see your dystonia reacts in a different way. That's something I may cover in a different video. What I recommend for now is just look straight ahead at the spot, feel the inside of your feet after you've done your body map exploring, relax your hand and then play extremely slow just without your mind ever shifting to the problem area.